Well, starting with 2023, right, it's unfortunately a bit of a down year. We we track a key metric that um, trade group called SEMI reports out on. It's called MSI, and that actually stands for a million square inches of silicon processed. And so we're seeing this year as, as a down year with uh, overall silicon process down by about uh, somewhere north of uh, 10%. And uh, so, unfortunately, that is driving the spec gases market uh, down for 2023, and we don't really see recovery uh, to 2022 levels, um, probably until early 25. So, we're in a bit of a, a downturn now, unfortunately. But for us, the biggest you know growth areas that we see in the industry uh continue to be uh in the silicon semiconductor space uh for some of the reasons that i talked about before uh and what we see in terms of individual products um a lot around etch uh gases some of the uh hfc type some of the rare gases we believe will continue to grow as well as uh, a lot of the deposition gases will also continue to grow as the industry embraces more of this trend called 3D scaling, right? And uh, we saw a big uh, transition about uh, six or seven years ago when the uh, non-volatile uh, memory uh, segment went from a 2D construction to a 3D construction. We saw a strong growth in demand for a lot of gases with that. Uh, it's looking like DRAM, uh, which is a volatile memory uh, storage technology, will undergo that sort of transition by the end of the decade. And we expect to see a pretty strong bump in uh, etch and deposition gas demand over that uh, time period. So that'll also lead to the growth of things like uh, NF3 um, as well across these segments. So, so those are some of the key areas where we're seeing growth. I think um, from a geographic perspective, you know, we're obviously a lot of news and excitement about the CHIPS Act in the USA and in Europe, and there's a lot of new uh, semiconductor fab capacity coming on in both these regions, right, which will help drive growth. But it's also important to remember that, you know, while we're seeing strong capacity expansion in the US and Europe, we're also seeing that across Asia, right, in all key producing regions. So we're seeing uh, a lot of capacity growth to continue in Korea, continue in Taiwan. We're seeing some in Japan and uh, definitely um, capacity growth will, will continue in China as well.